Hey everyone, my name is Wade. I'm one of the pastors here at Rock Point. Today we're continuing our conversation about hearing God's voice and what it means to listen to Him. And I want to take a few moments to press into what it, what's the point? What's the point of listening to God? The reality is that you and I were made for intimacy with God. It's our truest and deepest meaning and purpose in life to know God and enjoy Him forever. That's what we're living into. In any kind of relationships that's only transactional in nature ends up getting pretty cold and we lose motivation if it's just about getting things from God. Just like in our human relationships, if all we're about is what we can get out of them, they dry up pretty quick. We were made for intimacy with God and intimacy requires communication. And so we not only get to be people that speak to God and pour out our hearts to Him, but He invites us to listen to Him and He has things to say to us. So what's the point? of listening to God, it's first of all, it's to live into our deepest purpose, which is to know and enjoy God every single day of our lives. And that requires communication. So if it's all about intimacy with God, what can hold us back from that? Uh, what do we need to start with in overcoming some of the obstacles and hearing God's voice? Well, I'd say one of the big things is just our own perceptions of identity, both who I am and who God is. And that has to be rooted in truth, or we're going to be listening and praying out of a false foundation. It's like this. If I have views about God, let's say, that aren't rooted in His truth, as revealed in the Scripture and by the Spirit and the community of the church, I can have all sorts of ideas about what God is like, about how He responds to me, about His posture toward me. Let's say I imagine God as this authority figure that is discouraged in me and disappointed in me or maybe apathetic and cold toward me. Why would I ever want to spend time listening to someone that has that kind of approach to me? And so we need to come back to the true attributes of God and root our listening in what kind of God he's like as revealed in Jesus Christ. The scripture is full of descriptions of what God is like and what we can count on him to be like. And as that story unfolds in the scriptures of the true nature of God, I promise you, he becomes someone that you really want to listen to. But we also pray and listen out of some of our own identity. If I'm in a place in life where um, I'm discouraged in myself, if my whole life is rooted just in uh, the pursuit of success or money, or uh, if I have self-defeating views of myself, a lot of that stuff starts to be a barrier in hearing God's voice because all these filters and all these obstacles come up against God's voice in my life. So we need to be rooted in the truth of our identity, of who God says we are, His beloved sons and daughters, about who He is, a merciful, kind, compassionate God that is seeking to guide us in wisdom and truth. We can never spend too much time pressing into the true identity of God and what that says about who we are. It's critical in our understanding of what it means to hear His voice. We're not going to get into all of this. That's just a brief summary uh, as we start. But I want you to reflect on this today and through the week. Are there things that we're struggling believing about God's nature and character or about ourselves that are, end up being obstacles to God's voice? I mean, if the whole goal is intimacy with God, it's experiencing Him every day, what are the obstacles that we're encountering in my understanding of who God is or my understanding of myself that is keeping that flow of intimate communication from happening between me and God? There may be pieces that as you come, uh, come to understand an attribute of God for a variety of reasons, there may be something really challenging there. But I want us to wrestle through those things and understand and experience God in the fullness of His character as He's revealed Himself to be. We really come back to this. God loves you. He's promised that we as his followers can hear his voice. He has saved us. He desires to heal us, restore us, empower us for the life that he has for us. And so that means really listening to him. So I want to give you just a, a practical thing going out from here. I want you to spend a few minutes looking at the list that you see there uh, up on your screen. A list of words describing who God is. In prayerful reflection, ask God to show you who He is right now. And thank Him for that. Thank Him for those attributes, those characteristics that lead you into deeper intimacy with Him. Ask Him to reveal what you have a hard time believing about Him. If something comes up, spend some time talking with God about that. Asking Him to show you why you have a hard time believing that aspect of His character. And make notes in a journal or notebook about what you're seeing and hearing 
about the nature and character of God. I believe this with all of my heart, that as we understand who God truly is, as revealed in Christ, in the scriptures, and through the Holy Spirit, we'll want to listen to him. And all those projections we put on him, all the projections we put on ourselves, on ourselves about who we are, start to fade away and we can stand in the truth of who God is and who we are. And in that, open communication becomes a reality. We hear him, he hears us, and that true intimacy that we're longing for and that God longs for with us begins to be lived into, into that deepest purpose, that deepest meaning for why we're even put on earth in the first place, to experience God in his fullness every single day.